Swiftly on then, the final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 14652 in the name of Gordon MacDonald on Scottish Grocers Federation launches Scottish Local Shop report. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. Mr MacDonald, if you are ready, would you like to open the debate? You have seven minutes or thereby, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I welcome to Parliament those members of the Scottish Grocers Federation who are in the gallery tonight, and also thank John Lee of the SGF for his assistance. Last October, the Scottish Grocers Federation launched the first ever report into the importance of convenience stores to our villages, towns and cities. This report highlights in its introduction that this is the richest ever picture of the economic and social value of local shops in Scotland. The report produced by the SGF in conjunction with the Association of Convenience Stores, its sister organisation in England and Wales, found that for many rural communities, convenience stores often provided the only shopping option for the local community. In the urban areas, they serve as part of the mix of stores serving the needs of those living and working in our communities. The report found that 75% of the 5,602 convenience stores are run by small business owners and that the sector provided 44,332 jobs with their value to the economy in terms of gross added value at over half a billion pounds per annum. Scotland, with one convenience store for every 946 people, has more of these shops per head than any other part of the UK. We have read recently in the newspapers that some retailers are going through a difficult patch, with at least one high-profile casualty announced in the last week. A PwC report for the first half of 2015 highlighted that five high street stores were closing every week across some of Scotland's largest towns and cities. The figures highlight that stores owned by multiple retailers shut up shop with, enough, with not enough new openings to stop a net reduction. PwC highlighted that store, porf store portfolios continue to be reviewed and streamlined in response to the relentless advance of online shopping. But how has that affected convenience stores? Well, the report highlights there are now more stores than 2014, with a net growth rate of over one new shop per week, providing over 2,000 new jobs over the last year. Overall, sales are up 5% year on year as a result of an increase in average spend, more couples with young children using the stores, and the frequency of visits by foot to the local community store increasing. The range of services are increasing, helping to drive that increase in footfall with many convenience stores offering mobile phone top-ups, bill payment services, free-to-use cash machines, community notice boards and cold food to go. While social media is helping them to take on the major supermarket change with special offers and events advertised via Twitter and Facebook. The report found that another possible reason for positive figures was that 87% of Scottish retailers engage in some form of community activity, with more than 8 out of 10 collecting money for a local or national charity, 1 in 3 providing funding or support to a community event, and 1 in 4 providing sponsorship to local sports teams. It therefore comes as no surprise that of the 12 types of retail out outlets present in our communities that convenience stores were voted second by consumers in a Comres poll in 2015 as having the most positive impact on a local area. It is that involvement in the community and the range of services provided that helps create customer loyalty. It is that customer loyalty that is encouraging a new generation of young entrepreneurs to invest in new store openings with a 33% increase since 2014 of business people below the age of 30 opening and owning a convenience store. The report found that the sector is very entrepreneurial 
with 65% being the first person in their family to own or run a convenience store in Scotland. That, however, doesn't mean there are no issues needing to be addressed in order that this success continues. Small independent retailers are under immense pressure to maintain margins and profitability in order to have the funds to reinvest in their business. Many store owners have embraced new technology and installed LED lights, smart meters, chiller doors, etc., in order to cut overheads and compete with the supermarkets. This drive to efficiency is being assisted by the Scottish Government's Environment Agency, Zero Waste Scotland, who have made available a fund of 100,000 to enable convenience store retailers to carry out energy efficient refits. This has proved to be highly successful and many SGF members would be keen for this to continue. Then there are the issues out with the retailers' control that impacts on the viability of their stores. Although the report found that 58% of convenience store customers travel by foot, there are also 38% who drive to their local store. Parking problems impact on local shops, whether it is a loss of passing trade or impulse buys, as evidenced in my own constituency. In Sight Hill, there is an ongoing issue where I understand a lack of car parking provision by the university means that more and more parking in the adjacent local shopping and residential area is being used by students, resulting in a reduction of passing trade to local shops and difficulty for residents to park adjacent to their own homes. Then there are increased rents and non-domestic rates demanded of small retailers that do not reflect the difficult trading circumstances many find themselves in. Retailers in my constituency inform me that the Scottish Government Small Business Bonus has been very welcome, giving 100% relief to properties with a rateable value of up to £10,000, with a sliding scale of discount for properties with a rateable value of up to £18,000. Across Scotland, 92,000 small businesses, many of them local convenience stores, have had their rates abolished or substantially reduced. As I stated in the first ever parliamentary debate in August 2014 on the importance of convenience stores to our local e economies, when I co quoted the Carnegie Trust who stated, we recognise that for many towns the contribution of independent retailers is a crucial factor in the long-term sustainability, diversity and vibrancy of high streets. This report, the Scottish Local Shop Report, confirms and justifies the views of the Carnegie Trust that the long-term sustainability, diversity and vibrancy of high streets is down to local shops and the convenience store sector. And I would urge MSPs to pop in to the committee room one on Thursday, where they can not only pick up a copy of the report, but can discuss the findings with a number of retailers from across Scotland. Many thanks. I now call on James Dornan to be followed by Margaret McCulloch. Four minutes to thereby, please. Thank you, President Officer. I, I wish to thank my colleague Gordon MacDonald for bringing this debate to the Chamber and also welcome our visitors to the gallery. On the 27th of November last year, I had the pleasure to send off a charity conga around Hamden Park, participating in this event with a number of local primary schools, including ASN schools. The purpose behind the conga was to raise funds to ensure that no child in these schools went without a happy Christmas. All the funding raised on that day, which totaled thousands of pounds, was being kept by the schools for their pupils. Those responsible for this fantastic event, besides Glasgow, the Caring City and the schools, of course, include Hamden for their generous use of the stadium, and the Scottish Grocers Federation, who made sure every child was watered and fed. There may even have been some tea cakes and caramel wafers from a well-known company, whose name escapes me at the moment. This generosity from the Scottish, Gro Scottish Grocers Federation is only one example of the community work that this sector does. The report provided an excellent breakdown of the sector's activities within the, the community. As Gordon MacDonald said, over 80% th over of independent retailers were involved within their community, Scotland being second only to the southwest of England across the UK. And this is to be congratulated. Community engagement, of course, has taken many forms, for example, collecting money for national and local charities, Local stores also provide funding or in-kind support to local events, 
provide sponsorship to local sports teams or other community activities and play an important role in community council or local business association meetings and projects. I was amazed at some of the other statistics contained within the report, the value of the convenience store sector worth a staggering five billion to the UK economy, equating to 6% of the UK retail sector. 75% are small business owners, many who will be benefiting, as Gordon already said, from the small business bonus. 32% of owners are women, not parity, but an encouraging number to grow from. 23% of business owners have been in business for over 26 years, and 36% own their business in partnership with family members. So stability and longevity appear to be just two of the benefits of running a convenience store. And of course, we can't forget that when the word convenience is used, it's extremely appropriate. 78% travel less than a mile to the store, 25% use the store every day, and as has already been mentioned, 58% travel by foot to the store. So both convenient and environmentally friendly. In areas such as the Kidcart constituency, the convenience store often stands alone as the sole source of shopping in parts of housing estates such as Castlemilk. In other areas such as Crawfoot and Shawns, where they're playing a notable role in establishing a new business improvement district, they operate with other service providers, giving choice and diversity to residents. Indeed, such an important part are they of the local community. It was after consulting with local businesses in Mount Florida and Battlefield that I helped establish the business forum in which the numerous convenience stores located in the area have continued to play an important role. Presiding officer, many of us will remember Ronnie Barker's popular sitcom, Open All Hours. Well, that title is thankfully not the attitude and work practices of that old skinflint art right couldn't be more apt. These stores are indeed open all hours. They are often open 24 hours, seven days a week, earning the accolade of being a crucial mainstay of the community. Sign officer, I want to congratulate the Scottish Grocers Federation and their partners in compiling this report. They deserve to be recognised for the role they play as an important part of Scotland's economy and the resilience to a changing business environment. But they also deserve our recognition and our praise for the important role they play in communities across constituencies such as Cathcart and for the many examples of support they have given to our communities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now call on Margaret McCullough to be followed by George Adam. Thank you, President Officer. Also at the outset, let me begin by congratulating Gordon MacDonald for securing this debate and for giving us all the opportunity to note the findings of the local shop report and to speak more generally about the retail and grocery sector in Scotland. I also want to take the opportunity to commend the Association of Convenience Stores, the Scottish Grocers Federation and the Scottish Retail Consortium for all the work that they have to do to keep us in Parliament informed about what is happening in their industries and the real economy. As the Member's motion indicates, there are well over 40,000 jobs in the convenience stores in Scotland and many of those stores are family-run businesses with roots in the community. The overwhelming majority are run by small business owners, suggesting that the sector is highly entrepreneurial. If we include independent shops operating on petrol forecourts, then 75% of the shops studied in this report are run by small businesses. Only 17% of people say that they visit their local shops less than once a week. 25% of people actually say they visit their local shop every day. According to the report, 87% of independent retailers were involved in the community in some way. I have personally taken the time to visit convenience stores and it's clear that local shops can be a real social hub in the community. It struck me that many of these stores will have regular customers, particularly older people, who could have been shopping in the same place for decades. Convenience stores can be more than just a place to exchange money for groceries but to exchange conversations and also meet people. It also struck me that, for some people, the regular trip they make to pick up groceries or to get a newspaper could be the only time they leave the house that day. Staff working at the till or stacking shelves could be the only, only people they speak to all that day. Last week, I presented the Equal Opportunities Committee's report on age and social isolation. It's a report I recommend all members take the time to read because it underlines the importance of social interaction and being part of a community, as so many of our convenience stores are. I also want to refer to some issues which are relevant to today's debate, which have been raised at the Cross Party Group on Towns and Town Centres. 
The Scottish Government have indicated that they are now involved in a process of reviewing and hopefully refreshing the Town Centre Action Plan. I want to see a new, robust and comprehensive action plan brought forward at the earliest opportunity. The themes of the Scottish Town Centre's review, which was led by Malcolm Fraser, are useful for anyone with an interest in turning around our town centres, regenerating our towns and supporting businesses who invest in our local economies. And those themes have to be developed and taken forward in the coming months. The town centre first, the public sector taking the lead in promoting investment in town centres to drive up footfall and promote accessibility. Town centre living, making our town centres places to live again, not just places to work or to shop. Enterprise and communities have the community estate agency audit town centre assets and find better ways to use local properties and existing capacity. And digital towns, supporting Wi-Fi and making sure we have high-speed broadband in all our town centres. It would also be useful to know more about how the Scottish Government intend to proceed with the renewal of the Town Centre Action Plan. Retailers, large and small, will be interested in the end result, and so will the communities that they serve. In conclusion, presiding officer, let me conclude by saying that the local shop report has very clearly set out the importance of convenience stores to local communities and local economies. It is a further valuable resource for us in this Parliament to draw on as we consider the future of our town centres and the future of the retail sector in Scotland. Thank you. Thanks so much. Now call on George Adam to be followed by Cameron McCarnham. Thank you, President Officer. Can I also thank God Macdonald for bringing this debate to the Chamber here today? Because I welcome this debate, and as many of you will be aware, that I represent the great town of Paisley. And we've had many of the challenges that have been mentioned in the retail sector over the past 10 years, 10 to 15 years. And it tends to be that we are the one that the media will automatically take the picture of the high street to, to try and make their point and how things have changed so dramatically. But it is the convenience stores that are still within my town centre. As the retail giants have moved out of town, they are still serving and working with the local community. And this is important because there are still a demographic of my constituents who do most of their shopping within the town centre. The elderly and those from poorer backgrounds have more difficulties shopping out of town. And this is born in the report when it states that convenience stores customers, 78% of them travel less than a mile to use their, uh, their local store. 58% of the customers travel to their local store by foot, compared to 38% who drive, and 25% of customers use their shop every day. And this is mirrored in my constituency where there are small pockets of very successful local shops throughout our town. And in order for town centres like Paisley to uh, succeed, we must encourage these stores. We must ensure that they get the opportunity to develop further because they are the ones that are still contributing to our local economy. And I remember a number of years back when there was initial talk about uh, the reform of welfare. And one of the things that they said with regards to Paisley Town Centre was, from a retail perspective, welfare reform was going to cost Paisley Town Centre about a million pounds a year because, again, it was the old and the poorer uh, individuals who were shopping in the town centre. So all these things have to be taken into account. And in order, uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, they are still the ones that are uh, making sure that we have a local shop to go to. And one of the issues that I found quite interesting was that uh, the top three stores that they all want to have in areas, as specialist food shops, which is like your traditional butcher and the like, which we still uh, locally have a number of them, and they were extremely busy during the festive period, but they tend to kind of slow up. But it still is the only type of product where you can get that product. And that's why I say that these shops, these independent grocers, these independent stores, are the ones that are going to make our town centres thrive, because they are the ones that are offering that thing that's slightly different. They're offering a service that you can no longer get. They hark back to a time when everybody, the shopkeeper, knew your name and knew who most of his customer base was. And that's something we don't want to lose. Because last week, I actually spoke uh, during a debate, uh, ironically it was in lobbying, but I spoke about a bookshop that used to be in Paisley Town Centre. We used to have an independent bookstore, three or four generations of the same family owned that store. But with the internet, with the chance of being able to buy a book, 
delivered straight to your door, and also with the chance of getting e-books, they just couldn't compete. So you lose something in your town centre when you lose these types of shops. The irony for me is that the rest of the top three that they want is banks and post offices, businesses whose business model has been changing over the recent years. And I've constantly been speaking to the Minister with regards to the major banks pulling out of certain areas, but they are part of the retail ecology of uh, every kind of high street and every town centre as well. And they have to take on a responsibility because obviously all the shop and retailers need them as well. So in closing, presiding officer, small retailers, I believe, are the solution to our town centre problems. Uh, you know, once again, I'd like to thank Gordon for uh, bringing Gordon McDonald for bringing this debate to the chamber, and I wish all the retailers all the best. But I would encourage everyone when they're looking at shopping to try and shop locally in their own stores. I did it recently uh, over Christmas with uh, in my own town for my Christmas presents, and I think we need to lead from the front. We need to make sure that we are supporting these traders as well, because it's all so easy for it to end up going the same way as that bookshop that I mentioned. It's no longer there, and you wonder what happened to it. Thanks so much. Now I call on Cameron Buchanan to be followed by David Torrance. Four minutes to thereby, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I too wish to congratulate the Scottish Grocers Federation on the launch of the first ever local shop report produced in conjunction, and here we must with the Association of Convenience Stores. And here we must emphasize the word convenience. As ever, the rich amount of detailed information they provide is incredibly useful for us MPs to know how the sector is doing, what challenges they face, and what we can do to help. As we're all probably quoting the same statistics, because it's a, a large range of information in a targeted, concise report that is very welcome development. I'm sure colleagues of the, across the chamber have agreed this report does paint a very positive picture of the independent convenience store sector, and these entrepreneurs deserve our praise. They also deserve our help, which is why we should examine, I think, the areas in the report where challenges remain, so we know how to help. The report highlights the welcome news, that, as we all know, we've had these statistics. The highest concentration of convenience stores with 5,602 in Scotland and the figure of one shop for every 946 people I think is also an impressive proof, proof of the breadth and commitment of the sector serving our communities. As we don't have to look very far to yet, to yet further proof of their, to find further proof of their commitment, 29% of the shop, Scottish shop owners are working more than 70 hours a week and 22% take no holidays during the year. This is an incredibly strong work ethic and it's something you should be congratulated on. Although I think it's important that options for more flexible working are also available if desired. While long long longevity is, is itself impressive as the fact that 26% of shop owners in Scotland have been in the trade for over 25 years, it is imperative that we look forward to where economic growth and the jobs with it will come in the future. The answer, of course, is entrepreneurism. In this regard, the news from the SGF's report is again impressive 65% are the first person in their family to own or run a convenience store in Scotland, and 57 new shops have opened in the past year, which hints at exactly the sort of startup drive we need in this country. Furthermore, there's an encouragingly large representation of young people in the sector, with 16% of the managers aged 30 or under. This ability to drive economic growth is the future of the course in the future. It's of course tied up with the embracing of technology. Scottish shops has already been active in this area with 23% having, having a Facebook account and 20% having a Twitter account and around a, around a third offering contactless payments. As a businessman and frequent customer of local shops, I know that using technology to attract customers and make their transactions easier is the key to competing with other perhaps larger shops, as is the personal service that these convenience stores give. Uh, as George Adams said, they, 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 gone are the days when people, I sadly, used to know your name when you went to the shop, although it does happen in certain, shop, certain areas. There appears to be a bright future ahead for convenience stores in Scotland, but we cannot be complacent without delivering, about delivering this potential. Now, I'm sure grocers don't need politicians to tell them which technologies to adopt to help their business, but I think it's important that we remain aware of any issues facing small businesses facing small business owners that may prevent them from making the most of technological opportunities in this sector. Finally, I would, like to offer another, sorry, I would like to offer another admirable feature of independent stores, which is their extensive contribution to the local communities. Again, as we've just heard, just over the last year, 87% of them in Scotland were involved in some form of local activity, such as charity or sports work. Time and time again, they have shown themselves worthy of our extensive praise and support. 
But the most important aspect is how this binds their relationship together with local customers. This, I think, after all, is the key to cementing local stores' place in our communities and the continued health of the sector. As the SGF's report shows, the sector is growing in Scotland because it's providing customers with the local service they want. This, after all, is what it's all about. Many thanks. Thank you. Now call on David Torrance to be followed by Lewis MacDonald. Thank you, President Officer. I would also like to thank Gordon MacDonald for bringing this debate to Parliament today and congratulate the Scottish Grocers Federation for publishing the first Scottish local shop report. Without any doubt, small retailers and convenience shops contribute greatly to our economy. In Scotland, nearly 6,000 shops provide over 44,000 jobs. In addition, by using local services and suppliers, small retailers also reinvest back in their local economies. But as Gordon MacDonald has mentioned in his motion, independent convenience shops also play a vital role for communities across Scotland, with 87% of independent retailers engaging in community activity. These activities are wide-ranging. As an example, since the introduction of the five-pence single-use carrier bag charge, Small shops have raised significant sums for a charitable purpose. To make the benefits more lasting, the Scottish Grocers Federation now also works with the Scottish Government and keeps Scotland beautiful to support small retailers in working together and making their donations more tangible. I believe that acknowledging the benefits of small retailers and convenience stores is very important. It highlights that small retailers and convenience stores are thriving aspects of our communities across Scotland and contribute towards sustainable economic growth. However, these statistics should not be neglected that Scotland's town and city centres are affected by a large number of shop vacancies. Towns and cities have diff difficulties to attract customers whilst competing with larger shopping centres on the periphery. Even though statistics show that shop vacancies are falling and that re restructuring changes have a, are having an effect, I believe that further improving the attractiveness of our town centre is crucial aspects for supporting local economies. However, creating a more vibrant and active town and city centre is not an easy task. It relies, it relies on the cooperation of a range of stakeholders, including local council and business owners, to avoid conflict. This also demands a careful consideration of various interests. In this regard, I want to mention Kirkcaldy for All. Kirkcaldy for All is an excellent example of how to be involved and work with local, small retailers and businesses, and how a beneficial such a partnership can be for both customers and the local economy. Kirkcaldy for All was elected in 2010 by Business Improvement District in Kirkcaldy to deliver a business plan which, in their own words, aims to promote Kirkcaldy Town Centre as a place where people want to work, shop and spend their leisure time in a welcoming environment which is consumer-focused and investor friendly. To reach this goal, Kirkcaldy for All promote Kirkcaldy Town Centre through various events including the Fife International Carnival, the Big Haggis Burns Night, the Lantern Parade and the Beach Highland Games, as well as advertised in local newspapers and radio stations. Kirkcaldy Fall also encourages small businesses and retailers to participate in the Small Business Saturday UK, which in 2015 took place on the 5th of December. The Kirkcaldy campaign, which encourages people to shop local, was celebrated with street entertainers, and many offers of promotion and particip in participating businesses. Participants also received free social media coverage for a period of five weeks leading up to the event. Overall, 2015 has been a very successful year for Kirkcaldy for All. Besides being re-elected for another five-year term, Kirkcaldy for All also launched, launched a six-month trial for reduced parking costs in Kirkcaldy's town centre. Most notably, Kirkcaldy was named the home of Britain's fastest-growing small business, and I believe that Kirkcaldy for All played a crucial role in this success. The latest experience study ranked Kirkcaldy number one in the UK, higher than cities like Birmingham and Aberdeen. Kirkcaldy reflects a greater trend of growth in the sector, as turnover in small retailers and convenience shops has grown significantly over the past 12 months. Presiding of today has been a great opportunity to discuss these positive developments. However, looking ahead, we also need to think about how we can sustain this trend ensure that small retailers and convenience shops continue to thrive. Thank you. Thank you so much. I now call on Lewis MacDonald, after which we'll move to closing speech from the Minister. Thank you very much, and I too congratulate Gordon MacDonald for bringing this debate and all those involved in the launch of the Local Shop Report 2015. The independent retail sector is relatively strong in Scotland, the highest concentration of such stores in the UK, and of course, as members have said, new businesses opening all the time. Most local shops 
are standalone businesses or family businesses with many owners and family members working long hours and taking little time off because of their commitment to the enterprise. Hard work alone sadly does not guarantee the success or even the survival of a business and even long established independent convenience stores have found the financial climate of recent years a challenge and of course there are pressures and temptations which come from the growing competition of supermarket chains entering the convenience store market. Take Kelly's of Cults in Aberdeen, a local shop complete with bakery and butcher's department run by the same family from 1902 to 2015, but now leased to Sainsbury's. No doubt a rational business decision for the owners, but inevitably a loss of choice and variety for the customers. Sainsbury's, of course, is a good employer. It provides jobs, training and opportunities for its staff. It negotiates terms and conditions with the shop workers union as though something that other uh, employers in the sector should also do, and it is a popular and successful retailer. But what supermarket chains cannot provide is the diversity of products for which a local shop like Kelly's of Cults was rightly known. The business model of a company like Sainsbury's is to keep prices down by procuring produce from a single source, and by definition, that reduces diversity and therefore choice. It also has unintended consequences, as for example when Young Seafood lost the smoked salmon contract with Sainsbury's. At a stroke, the fish processed at Young's factory in Fraserborough lost its outlets right across the UK and this month, as a consequence, over 150 workers in Fraserborough have lost their jobs. Local shops, by contrast, are more able and more willing to place orders with local suppliers and that is one of the ways in which they can make a real contribution to their local economies. It is one of the things that is lost when local shops are taken over or driven out of the marketplace altogether. Another challenge facing new and existing businesses in the independent convenience store sector is from the illicit trade in alcohol and tobacco. Sellers of such contraband advertise their services and products through social media, making it difficult for the police uh, and HM RC to track them down. A recent sting operation in Aberdeen revealed just how easy it was to access these with hundreds of illegal cigarettes bought from two different sellers on the street in only a couple of hours. Nonetheless, there have been successes in tackling this trade, including the seizure of 5,000 illegal cigarettes and three and a half kilos, uh, kilograms of, uh, of tobacco from addresses in Peterhead and Fraserborough in September of last year. Continued operations by the police, by trading standards and by HMRC will go a long way to tackling illicit sales and thereby to protecting legitimate business in local convenience stores from this uh, unwanted and illegal competition. I was interested to note that the Scottish Grocers Federation called on the Scottish Government to give responsibility for tackling this illicit trade a more prominent role within uh, the range of ministerial portfolios and this might indeed provide a step in the right direction to show the seriousness with which this issue should be taken. So I welcome this debate and this report, highlighting as they do the important role of local shops in both urban and rural communities, and I hope enough people will continue to choose to support the local shop for that important role to continue for generations to come. Thank you. Many thanks. I will now move to closing speech from the Minister, Fergus Ewing. Minister, you have seven minutes, so thereby, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Could I begin by congratulating Gordon MacDonald for bringing forward this important debate. Uh, he pointed out the huge importance uh, of convenience stores to Scotland, uh, and he set out his, his stall by uh, summarising some of the salient facts that over 40,000 jobs are sustained by the sector with half a billion pounds or more of, of uh, turnover and the enormous contribution that they make to the communities that they serve, uh, not least in uh, his own constituency, and I think in particular Pentland, to which he, he referred. And uh, uh, I've had the pleasure of working with uh, Gordon and some of his constituents and the Scottish Grocers Federation. Gordon has been a champion of this cause. He's pursued it. He's uh, persevered in pursuing it. And I note, incidentally, that the Scottish Grocers Federation is, is uh, 98 this year and will be celebrating its centenary in 2018. Something to look forward to, presiding officer. Uh, I, I think the, the uh, cross-party support uh, for the sector is extremely encouraging. It's been a very positive debate and I, 
I praise all the contributions from members uh, to the debate uh, today and the opportunity to discuss some of the enormous contribution that is made. Uh, these truly are local businesses, perhaps more so than just about any other type of businesses as their own a local shop report 2015 exemplifies, and I think coming second only to the post office is the most community-based, the most local, making, as members have outlined, the, uh, the greatest commitment to communities of perhaps all in the retail sector. That was the message that I took from the various contributions as we went on a sort of virtual geographic tour of Scotland from Aberdeen, Kirkcaldy, through Glasgow, Cathcart, where I'm left with, a, a, I think, a, a kind of indelible image of Mr. James Dornan leading at the front of a charity conga, raising money for a children's charity, a sort of Pied Piper of Hamden, I think, as he would describe himself. And we know that Mr. Adam champions always the, his native town of Paisley, and he always mentions Paisley. So. I was surprised that it was a whole three seconds into his speech presiding officer before he actually mentioned the word Paisley. Uncharacteristic forbearance there, Mr. Adam, in your contribution this evening. But seriously, there are a number of issues, I think, that were raised, and I'd perhaps just like to highlight some of them. First of all, um, business rates has been mentioned by many, and business rates is a necessary contribution to Scotland's finances. Uh, they make an enormous contribution to sustaining public services through the rates that they pay. When did we last hear a business getting recognition for actually contributing enormously to help maintain our health and education, police, environmental services? But they do that enormously. And of course, the smaller businesses value very highly the small business bonuses we heard. I think, in fact, it's nearer 100,000 businesses that now receive the small business bonus. My ambition, or one of the presenting officers, is that the small business bonus becomes a sort of embedded part of policy, not something that is liable to be removed, but something that will continue as part of the system as long as we have the current rating system. Um, uh, and we, uh, in our party, have made a, a commitment that we will retain the small business bonus if re-elected to the end of the next term which I think by my arithmetic now takes us to 2021. And that's important because that sort of certainty and long-term planning is something that I think would really be appreciated by those smaller convenience stores, which, uh, as was set out very clearly by Mr. McDonald, value the small business bonus which they obtain. So I, I do hope that, that those parties that do not presently support the small business bonus will, um, will join with us in recognising this makes an enormous contribution, but there are other contributions. For example, the employment of young people. I heard, in fact, it was from the convenience store in Mr. McDonald's constituency. I learned of the contribution to the employment of young people, the provision of what used to be called a Saturday job a, in the old days, presiding officer, that perhaps, if I may say so, you and I can remember particularly well, of employment of young people to do a paper round, to do that kind of work. Okay, the salary is not high, but it, it inculcates the work ethic into young people. It provides them the opportunity to understand that uh, to do work, you have to arrive at a certain time, finish at a certain time, and do the job through. Uh, and this work is provided to local children in a safe environment by these businesses. That's perhaps something that's easy to overlook. And problems such as parking and planning and regulation are ones, I think, that are really at the nub of the nitty-gritty experience of running a small business. The frustrations of these can be very irritating, as I well remember when I ran my own small business. Uh, and uh, I, I won't share with you the frustrating experience I had in relation to planning, but perhaps uh, in a different environment. Uh, so we have to remember that when we are taking steps to uh, encourage the responsible use of tobacco and alcohol, and when we pass regulations, we must bear in mind and we must consider carefully prior to making those regulations and implementing them, what they mean in practice for the people who have to apply them. It's very easy making a, a high-minded uh, rhetorical uh, speech about the, the value of doing these things, and rightly so. However, it's far more difficult when applying these regulations to make sure that they are set in a practical way that doesn't impose uh, an undue burden that is consistent and proportionate as our better regulation policy uh, sets, uh, sets out. 
the enormous contribution that is made to charity has been mentioned, I think, by almost every speaker in this debate. Uh, and that is something that uh, a, we cherish, and I think which perhaps means and explains why the convenience stores have been uh, regarded and in the independent report as the second most popular type of, uh, of retail uh, business in the country. So in conclusion, presiding officer, as the minister who sought to, to build up a close relationship with the whole retail sector and to recognize the value that they play in employ employing in Scotland, uh, a, a, I think around a quarter of a million people I do have a particular affinity for those businesses, very often family-run, small businesses, rooted in Scotland, rooted in their community, the convenience stores, open from 8 till late, which means they start work at 6 or 7 a.m. and work as long hours as anybody in this country, and therefore it's a, it's a, a great experience today to have the opportunity to thank all of these people and their staff for the enormous contribution they make to their communities and to Scotland. Many thanks and thank you all for taking part in this important debate and I now close this meeting of Parliament.